Dr. Bernard Nordlinger, liver surgeon at the Versailles University in France, will talk about the multimodal treatment of liver metastasis. Dr. Nordlinger, could you point out the importance of multimodality treatment of patients with liver metastasis of colorectal cancer? Well, this is the this concern the field of uh, liver metastasis from colorectal cancer. And in this field, there has been huge progress made in the recent years because some years ago, patients diagnosed with metastasis were considered as only an indication for palliative treatment. Things have changed, and now we have made progress in uh, different parts of treatments, which are surgery and also uh, chemotherapy. So the, 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 the point is how to uh, arrange these different uh, treatment modalities together. I mean, this is a quite frequent problem because the, the prevalence of this disease, you know that there are more than one million cases of colorectal cancer, new cases diagnosed in the world each, each year. Out of these, about half of the patients have at one time, either at the diagnosis or later, a liver metastasis. So this is at least 500,000 new patients a year. Out of these patients, now we must divide them into two groups, those in whom the metastasis can be taken out by surgery, we call that resectable, and those in whom it, they cannot be taken out, at least at presentation. It's important to know that because we know now that when the metastasis can be taken out, there's a chance for cure, and the life expectancy is uh, between between, let's say, 25 and 50 percent, according to the size, location, etc., of metastasis. So the big thing now is to decide when metastases are diagnosed, how they are, what is their number, what is their location, and to decide what should be uh, the treatment strategy. So the treatment strategy can be surgery, it can be chemotherapy. If it's chemotherapy, uh, the strategy must decide, the doctors must decide if they go for to try to resect the metastasis after chemotherapy or just to improve the condition of the patient and consider it at palliative treatment and try to gain some time and comfort. So this is the big uh, decision that has to be made uh, at the presentation of the patient. And this is what we call multimodality because the only way to treat in the right way these patients is to discuss their cases in meetings where all the different experts are present. It's not the right way to do it if only the medical oncologist decides by himself or the radiation therapist or the surgeons. All the doctors must be present in these uh, multimodality uh, meetings. It's very important to decide what is the aim for a, for a given patient. So uh, at present approximately 20% of metastases can be resected according to their size and the characteristics at presentation, and the other 80% cannot be resected, but then one has to decide what to do. So the multimodality meeting is very important, not only at the beginning, when the patient arrives in the hospital, but if he receives chemotherapy every three to four months to, uh, to know how is he evolving according to the results of chemotherapy? So in these uh, multimodality me meetings, there should be surgeons, medical oncologists, radiation therapists, pathologists, and radiologists. The radiologist is very important because he's the one who says, on the, by looking at the CT scan, where the metastases are and if they can, according to the, where they are, be taken out. So then we come out with two different groups of patients, those who have metastasis can be resected, and those who have metastasis that cannot be resected. So in those who can be resected, uh, the aim is to try to have cure, what we call cure at between practice, is survival at five years, and mostly, most of the patients survive at five years, survive uh, longer. And in these patients, the indication of multimodality treatment is to have perioperative chemotherapy. This is chemotherapy with a regimen of Folfox, 5-FU oxaliplatin, uh, six cycles before the, the surgery, then the surgery, then uh, six cycles after. This is based on an ERTC uh, trial that was uh, 
published in uh, Lancet uh, a few years ago and I was the PI of this study. So this is the standard at the moment. Some question whether post-op chemotherapy only could be sufficient, but right now we don't have trials who prove that, so maybe in the future, but right now the standard of care is chemo surgery and chemo for these patients. So this is 20% of the patients. Now the others, the others, many of them will not have any uh, surgery, but all, all of them must be uh, evaluated for potential surgery. So some are considered as not resectable immediately, but they could become resectable if the tumor shrinks, you know, becomes smaller. And uh, then they deserve to have a chemo regimen which gives a high response rate, even if it's uh, uh, aggressive. What we want to do is shrinkage to try to take it, take it out. And at the other aim, uh, the other end of the scope are patients with diffuse metastasis who are not fit, and we uh, do not expect to do surgery. So in these patients, we don't want to give too aggressive treatment just to try to prolong their life as long as possible. So for the first uh, category of patients with non-resectable, but potentially what is we call potentially resectable, then we need aggressive treatment to try to induce response. So the, the aim in these patients is response. For this, we have uh, several regimens. It's either, either uh, combinations of cytotoxic regimens. For example, it can be Falfox, 5 fu platin or Falfiri. This is <laughs> <there's> a bug here. <laughs> uh, or now we use triple combination. 5-FU oxaliplatin-arinotecan, which results in quite high response rate, above 50%, up to 60 or 70%, are the combination of cytotoxics and uh, targeted agents. So the targeted agents which are used the most commonly are uh, uh, VEGF inhibitors, this is uh, bevacizumab, uh, which is very commonly used, particularly in the United States, also in Europe. Uh, the response rate is not that obvious that the response rate uh, in the phase 3 trial uh, is always improved. When combined with arinotecan in a big trial, important trial, it was improved. When combined with oxaliplatin, this was less obvious. Now we have the other, the EGF inhibitors, which are cetuximab and uh, panitumumab. This, they can be used in patients who have no muta mutation of the Keras gene. And now at this meeting and at ASCO this year, we have seen that uh, not only the uh, exon 2 of Kiras should be evaluated, but other exons and also NRAS. So now we have a more extended determination than the RAST statute. And if the RAS uh, genes are not, uh, are not mutated, then uh, usually what considers the good indication is to administer uh, uh, EGFR blockers, which is a cetuximab in combination with chemotherapy. Then whatever is used, uh, the patient should be evaluated again in multimodality meetings after three, four cycles to know what has been the response of the shrinkage or no shrinkage of the tumor. And if there's no effect, then there's a need to change the treatment. If there's uh, effect, then maybe the patient can be considered for surgery. So I told you we have a, a group of patients who are between the completely unresectable and the resectable. So these should be evaluated very carefully for potential resection. And what is important also, and this is another aim of the multimodality meeting, is that uh, the, the idea is to take out the tumor as soon as it has become resectable and not to go on with chemotherapy uh, very, for, for, forever because going for chemotherapy forever, which may happen when medical oncologists do not ask the advice of the surgeon or if they don't have a surgeon to work with, then the patients, the time when it's resectable will, will uh, go. Then the metastasis may not be visible anymore on CT scan, which doesn't mean that they are cured and the surgeon cannot find them, so he cannot do the surgery. And the other problem is this, that this can damage the liver and we know that uh, starting from six cycles, the administration of chemotherapy can damage the liver and increase the risk of surgery. So it's very important not to overtreat the patients with the chemotherapy, to try to 
take out uh, the metastasis, which means that the aim should not be best response, what's the medical oncologist calls best response, as, as long as it decreases, but the aim should be, uh, at least the intermediate aim should be uh, resection. So do not overtreat, this is the message with chemotherapy, but do not overtreat also with the surgery, because there are some countries where the doctors do not believe too much in chemotherapy and the surgeons from some countries in Asia, for instance, uh, where the surgeons would take out 20 liver metastases in the liver without having the use, without using chemotherapy. So overtreatment anyway is not good. So this makes, well, means why it's so important to have the multimodality uh, meetings and the multimodality treatment. And this is due to this treatment that we have improved so much the, the prognosis and the outcome of these patients. And the last thing is uh, some of the patients, we know there's a chance that they become resectable. Now we have patients with uh, diffuse metastasis. We still have to follow very carefully these patients because now we have such major responses with uh, chemotherapy that even though it was not expected at the beginning, we can come out some weeks later with seeing almost nothing left. So, so what I mean and what I said yesterday in my presentation, in this field now, never say never. I mean, never say it will never be resectable. Because if you have a big metastasis in small ones, now if the small ones disappear, we know that most of the time they are still there, but maybe we can uh, do some good to the patient by taking out uh, the big one. So this is a message I'm trying to uh, give and make public everywhere. I give this uh, kind of talk uh, very often, maybe once or twice a month, everywhere in the world. And I think it goes through, and this is very important that the uh, uh, medical oncologists and surgical oncologists work together. This is the best way to, to help the patients. So basically, this is the message. Okay. Thank you very much.